lastly, ten minutes. Um, the call. So like I was like, discos. so this this came from like I was listening to the Walid Ali podcast. <laughs> God, As I'm glad do. we only have 10 minutes to go. <laughs> but they were like Can't talking be. about like... What an insightful how, like, pod that must have been. Well, it kind of like annoyed me a little bit because like one of the things that they were talking about was how um, this whole like deglobalization thing is like mad because we're becoming more local and um, and it's going to be better for like even third world countries because like we just treat them as a commodity where we go to like I don't know Fiji to hang out and now the airfare is going to be so expensive that like we can actually have a normal What's relationship the alternative? What's can't... the second biggest industry after tourism? Is well it that's one of the points toads? Yeah it's basically like fish I'm pretty sure But like what oh, no, I know what it is sugar that's really yeah, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. that they still have sugar Deal. barons Barons They're yeah. doing sugar Jesus Crazy And what's wrong with that point? No, no, no So there's like, Well, one of the things That like I wanted to say Is like First of all, dude Like that's what, how they make money it, It's not like you going There's gonna like them. They're gonna be like Oh, fuck yeah I hate white people anyways And now I'm just gonna You don't have any fucking money, dude Because they were paying Don't hate white people But like it's not even that no. Like the bigger problem I think like a lot of people is, Are not recognizing Obviously we don't know Like what the post-COVID globalization is going to look like. But what we do know is that's something that we mentioned, like when this COVID thing started, I, I was talking about like how supply chain manufacturing is going to move back to like Australia and move like whatever can be produced here will be produced here because this uh, it's too unstable is something that we figured out. But what that also means is that we've basically kicked off a big ladder for countries to become rich. If you look at all of these countries like Taiwan, Korea, China, these East Asian tiger economies that went from like being dirt poor to like being significantly rich in such a small, they all um, had like an export driven economy. They used the supply, the, the demand of the world and they just produced the best available uh, product for like the lowest price and they competed with the rest of the world and then they were so good that we kept buying it to the point where like China's like the biggest example where like everything was from them. Businessmen don't do it because they like China. It's because they were doing the best job at doing it. What I'm saying is like that ladder is now gone. If I'm a poor country, like remember when we were in Pakistan and we met uh, the finance minister? You don't forget that. One of the things that he kept on talking about is like how we can be so competitive and how we can actually utilize this demand. He was talking about like agricultural, software technologies, blah, blah, blah. They were like... Ah, let me be honest. He was talking about taking call centers out of India. That yeah, was, well, that was part point. of it. But like, but what, what I'm saying right. is like all of that investment <sighs> is, is irrelevant now because... There's a there's a collapse in uh, in global demand for it, and even if there is a demand, they want it to be local, which is fine. I I understand that. What but what I'm saying is like, I don't know how if I'm like a finance minister of some third world country right now, what's my pathway of becoming rich? It used to be an export driven economy. Think That's probably not going to happen. Rich. They're doing it again. Like I don't want to get into the whole China thing because it gets. But part of the reasons why like they're doing this deglobalization thing is actually to counter China. But the thing is, like, you're you're like like late. They've already passed that point where they have like enough domestic demand. They have a demand. selfish, yeah. They selfish have the, so economy. so you're not actually hurting them. You're kind of hurting Bangladesh, and uh, you're you're hurting like African economies that were looking to like be the the China of the 21st century. Look, I know like there's always ways that countries can figure out, and and there has to be a way that uh, that we can't think of as yet. But what I know is like. This isn't great news, man. This is like, this is shit. And um, yeah, like, I don't know. The other thing that like they're talking about, like, is how um, airfare is going to be. <coughs> it is forcing the neoliberal model to, to, um, to collapse. To collapse. That's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of cool, but like, it's what's the alternative, right? bro? Because like, I think I the thing understand. is now they might actually have the opportunity to be the next China. Who Pakistan? Well, that's a very philosophical point. Put into well, these countries are essentially put into like an economic servitude, aren't they? So, yeah, that yeah, that's also true. So if they, if you the are whole, in a position where the entire global economy is restructuring, and America has to worry about its own interests for a while, maybe you'll have the opportunity, this brief little window, to jump through. Maybe to start I don't understand how. Products. I don't understand what's the pathway to it. How do you make that money? Well, I don't either. And the reason that I don't is because, let's be honest, most societies are not as hardworking, intelligent, and diligent 
as South Korea yeah, and China. That's the other thing. Actually, so that's actually one of the, the best only way to do like, it is it's we're in the age of uh, information, right? It's just tech and like cheap. Well, yeah, and so you, no, you do not if you're a third world country that's agrarian, as Ali was saying. How do you just go? Okay, you know how you make chips? Microchips. Yeah, my- <laughs> that's a good yeah, gag. You should true. use it somewhere. But that's that's such that's like yeah, the best way to put it because I understand how tech is like the way China is able to like now compete in the tech world is because they like for forty years they were yeah, selling invested. like towels. Like <coughs> yeah. that's what they were trying to perfect. <laughs> wow. And now they've got towels. like enough like whatever right. like just like it's really f- basic shit. No, like no, no, it's just the pencils and shit like that. But now like towels. they have like enough money to be able to invest into things like tech. So now so the, the 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 force that you're trying to compete is actually not being affected by it as much. You're like 15 years too late on that one. But you know what they should be doing is exactly what Joel Fitzgibbon is talking about. And I think there's just a major reason, on top of the fact that there is a global economic system in place to keep everyone where they are, is sort of digi-feudalism. But the other thing that Fitzgibbon was talking about, which is what Australia should be doing and these other countries, if you are an agrarian culture society... What does that mean exactly, like agriculture? Like that's your primary export. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's the case... Move away from monocrops. Move away from high-yield, low-value products like wheat and start growing things like blueberries and macadamia nuts. Mom start and diversifying and incentivizing your farmers yeah, to I grow guess. these niche products. That's the first step. Dude, that would be the first step. To adapt. Just, what? I guess, like, you're right. Like, you have to find some... You have to adapt to it and you have to find something. But the problem is, like, Tamarind, most yeah. of these agrarian societies that you talk about... Um, I don't know. Let's take like the example of blueberries. Their climate is not conducive to it. Like you need heavy investments. Like you're going to have to grow them like weed is grown, which is like you just create an artificial environment somewhere inside and you can grow blueberries. Blueberries There's are like... This path, weed. Why don't we think about that? And well, that Afghanistan, that Afghanistan did that with heroin. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe sure. we can Look at how well it turned out for them. Is the spice <laughs> trade still working for India? Like turmeric and coriander and shit? You're 400 years too late for that. But... <laughs> But there's still a market. Yeah, there's still. Yeah, dude, well, fact, he's I'm not putting, wrong. I'm putting it out there. If you want, you know what, India. If anyone India wants to be rich, sumac. That shit is expensive. Just <laughs> boom. Export exclusively sumac, and you'll be richer than America in five years. Fact. But the but the other problem. Should I is like, on that? Imagine a 1.3 billion person economy being based on sauce. <laughs> it's not sauce. It's a herb. Oh, it's a powder. A- yeah. Well, I'd still say it's, it's better than a fucking gold theory. You know what, Coke. actually? It's really expensive. It's not that far off the mark it's, with India. It's, it's, it's pretty close. But it's like a really expensive herb, dude. It's like eight bucks for like a centimeter. But Come like on. every every company, I, I, I know for in Australia's instance, like I've been told, like they don't, even if it's like if some other country is producing like the top quality sumac, they're not into it at the moment. Like Oh, because of the I climate. know this guy who works at like... um. One of the big retailers, like he's at uni, and he was telling me how customers are literally coming up and demanding, saying that we don't want any of our shit made in China. Now, that's obviously has political connotations to it, but like there's also this whole thing of like we need to be more local. And yeah, so- but I don't. No, Camila makes a good point. You can't replace soil and crops because you also, I think something like 40% of the globe's. Uh, you know the, the basics, like your soybeans and your and your wheat. Most of that just goes to feeding animals. That's why you should go vegan, man. No, I hate that argument. Cowspiracy. So it's not going to happen. But you know what will happen? Microalgae. That <laughs> is the way of the future. Plankton. That's how you feed. Well, we eat, we eat, we eat microalgae no, or we animals. feed animals a microalgae? Well, we eventually do. It's called the circle of life, Ali. True. But that's what we'll be feeding animals in the future. And it's also a great carbon sink. And it's 40 times more dense than wheat. 